Well, uh, welcome to the Hermitage for this week's devotional. Uh, Father Chuck is not in town, and it is my pleasure to bring it to you this week. Our reading is from Colossians 3, from Sunday. Uh, it's a very short passage, but it has some really interesting um, ideas just in those four verses. So Colossians 3, 1 through 4, reads that, like this. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, like I said, there's a couple really fascinating things to, to look at, and um, it, it's packed full of information in just those four verses. So let's just take a look at a couple of them. One of the things that strikes me right there is right at the beginning, if then you have been raised with Christ. That is a statement. That means that because of the work that Christ did on the cross, you've been raised with him. And we celebrated that this last Sunday, Easter. We are now able to say, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed because... That is the culmination of the work that he's done. So right there, you've been bought. So your new self is with Christ. The thing that really is fascinating is that we have two things. It's, a, it's basically a double imperative. We have seek the things that are above in verse 1. And in verse 2, set your minds on things that are above. To seek the things that are above reminds me of Christ telling us uh, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Uh, it is taking your mind off of the things of this world and it's setting your heart to, to Christ. And then... We have set your minds on things that are above. So set the above, your mind, your dwell, where your mind dwells. The thing that comes to mind, the question that comes to mind is what is the thing that you think about when you don't need to think about anything? I don't know who said that. Uh, I have it written in one of my Bibles. And it just struck me as such an interesting thought. What do I think about when I don't need to think about anything? Our minds are a very powerful thing. They are able to bring us up, like lift us up spiritually, or push us down spiritually. If we are constantly thinking about negative things, our outlook on life is going to be very bleak and scary and depressing. But we're not supposed to be thinking about things of this world on this earth. Your life is hidden with Christ in God because you have died to your old self. Like I said, you have been bought with a price we celebrated that this Sunday. And you no longer are here. Your soul, your heart, your mind should be focused on where you're supposed to be because you're not here anymore. I mean, you're here, but you're not here anymore. You are in Christ seated at the right hand of God. Think about that. The new life that 
Jesus proclaimed is, as Father Chuck constantly reminds us, not about sitting on a cloud, strumming your harp, playing bad music, and wishing you had a magazine. No, we have a promise at the end. St. Paul says, when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Uh, the Amplified Bible puts it this way, when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in the splendor of his glory. Think about that. You are now and in the future in his glory. You are seated with him at the right hand of the Father because that's where your new life is. You were bought, your life is not your own. This is a good thing. It's a hard thing to get our minds off of. And the everyday struggle just pushes the spiritual out of our thoughts so completely. And, and the question is valid. What thing do you think about when you don't need to think about anything? Our minds and our hearts should be set on things above, not on the, the troubles that we will be facing or the, the pump, the well pump that broke or the clogged sink that's constantly being clogged. It's not about that. Our hope is in the Lord and thanks be to God, his work on the cross made it possible, possible for us to join in with him in his glory. And it's not a thing that we have to grasp or pay for. He already paid for it. All we have to do is live into it, which is a struggle bus, I know. But when you set your minds on the things that are above and not on the things that pull you down into the muck and grime of this fallen and broken world, your soul is uplifted, your heart is lightened. And when you seek the things that are above, setting your mind and your heart on what Christ has called us to be, we get to have a little piece of heaven within us. And yeah, the struggle is real, the fears don't go away. But we know that at the end, when our life appears, that is Christ Jesus appears again, you will appear with him in his glory and his splendor. And isn't that a wonderful thing? Your life is not your own. You don't need to be constantly brought down into the horribleness. Your true life is right there with Christ next to God, our Father, who loved us so much that thanks be to him, sent his son to die on the cross for us. And he sent him not to judge us, but to save us. And we've been saved and we're celebrating that we've been saved this whole week and this whole year and our outlook on life should be different. It shouldn't be the same as others. And I hope that you really take a good look at what it is that your, your mind is dwelling upon and what your heart is truly seeking. And if it's not pointed up, then let's take the steps that's necessary to change where that pointing is. Where or what is that thing that you think about when you don't need to think about anything? Our hope is in Christ. And when we don't need to think about anything, no job or cleaning or doing the dishes or anything like that, our hearts and our minds 
should always be pointed to our loving God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, announcements for this week are very limited. Um, we're going to have an introduction to a new adult Bible study uh, that is hopefully to give me a little bit of time to work on Father Chuck's uh, Sunday School Bible study. Uh, sorry, Bible uh, adult education uh, uh, to give me time to work on that so that we can start posting those online. But also, um, this is a really fascinating conversation about uh scripture and specific passages in scripture and what do they actually mean and things like that. Uh, I'm, I'm doing a very poor job in defining what that class is. Uh, there is no drive through communion this week. Uh, and I believe that is all of the announcements that I have. Uh, we will have our normal three services, so please join us at 8, 10.30, or at 5 p.m., and have a very blessed rest of your week.